welcome p2 podcast episode three we just got done watching the uh london royal ravens uh call of duty do we still know what this is called call of duty invitational invitational tournament london royal ravens uh tournament and holy cow do we have a lot to talk about this is gonna be awesome there was a lot of big things that happened this weekend um yeah, it it felt kind of like what we were used to back in like yeah. other Call of Duties, honestly. It it I, it got me hyped. It got me hyped up as well. And it's cool that before we had to wait, <clears throat> you know, like months in between tournaments. Now we're going to have them like every 2 weeks. Mhm. So, it was pretty cool. But yeah, um definitely a lot of fun. Yeah. So, uh the schedule for this podcast we're going to be breaking down all of these uh matches that happened we took pretty extensive notes on each of them um who did well who didn't do well uh individual players um the idea was to do a review of the top 10 plays um during the podcast but it looks like we're gonna have to wait to do that we're probably going to do it in a separate youtube video um, the reason behind that is because YouTube doesn't have a really good clip function yet. Um, I was talking to somebody and trying to explain to them why it's a big deal that they're on YouTube, just because they don't have a lot of the functionalities that we're used to with live streams. Um, but next time, we'll definitely get it set up. We will be reviewing our top 10 video on the next podcast next week. So Yeah, we will. And just so you guys know, we have 16 top plays written down right now yeah 16 there's a lot of stuff that went down yeah there was uh we have we have a lot of notes it was funny we share a google doc and every time something big would happen we would all type in all caps (laughs) like oh my gosh gunless went huge or something so it was a lot there was a lot of good plays congratulations to the chicago huntsman the home team bringing home the dub would they get 50 50 points for winning or something I, I think they're just getting extra <clears throat> 10 points for winning, but all in all in the weekend, they got. 50. I thought that uh, I'm pretty sure you get extra points if you win. Yeah, you get 10 extra. Oh, so you get 20 points for winning or for coming in first. Well, we will review that. And on the topic of points, um, you some of the viewers that have watched last week, you might have known Mark and I had made predictions going into this weekend. So we thought it would be cool to start having a friendly little competition between us where we will pick uh, who we think is going to come out of the initial pool play matches. We're also going to pick who we think is going to make it to the semifinals and the top four teams. And then we're going to pick who wins the tournament. And he and I are going to follow the same point system as Call of Duty once we get that all figured out. And then hopefully by the end of it, we'll have a winner to see who can... uh, Guess the most matches. I mean, it's definitely going to be me, but it's definitely going to be me um, because I'm better. Uh, but we thought it would be fun t- for the loser to buy some sort of an item to do in a giveaway. So the giveaway is going to happen to anybody that is sub to us on YouTube as well as follows us on Twitch, where we just started this channel a couple weeks ago and. Anybody that follows the channel uh, helps it out a lot. Anybody who watches the YouTube videos helps it out a lot. So this is a fun little way for you to hopefully get entered into a giveaway. I don't expect very many with us. Right. I don't expect a whole lot of people to do it. So safe to say your chances are pretty decent. So definitely subscribe to us on YouTube. Definitely follow us on Twitch. Um, You don't want to miss out on that. So yeah, got some more information coming on that. Right as well. Right. Uh, we'll definitely get that all set up for the next podcast. We'll show you kind of our setup. We'll we'll tally our picks from this weekend because we did make picks for this weekend. We'll kind of go through who we picked and uh, who we didn't. Um, so, yeah, I think that'll be a fun little fun little way to get banter between us and hopefully get one of our viewers something cool. We'll see. Yeah. So, um Without further ado, let's we're going to talk real briefly about how the event went as a whole. Again, we talked about that a lot two weeks ago, and I don't think we need to do a whole lot of it just because a lot of the stuff that we said is happening. Um, one of the main things I noticed is things like um, the point of view while you're watching is um, still cool. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's getting better. It's not as much third person. They're they're utilizing all of those tools that they showed off in the beginning a lot more effectively this time around. Um, it's yeah. definitely getting a lot better. Um, and then the other thing I wanted to touch on was the. <laughs> The hype for the London crowd is always huge going into Call of Duty. For whatever reason, those people over there across the pond, man, they're crazy. They love they their do Call everything. They love their Call of Duty, and they did not disappoint this weekend. It was constant, you know, chanting. They have all of these like cool like chants that they sing like throughout the entire event, and I know that that's really popular in soccer or football, wherever you're from. But I just I love it. I think the chants get the get the crowd really into it. I think the teams feed off of it. We said last week that London Royal Ravens were absolutely going to thrive on it, and they did to oh a my god great extent. Yeah, the the Crazy. Ro- the Royal Ravens loved it going into it. That's yeah, that was a a common theme throughout the weekend. They had a beach ball that they were playing with in between matches because one thing that didn't change between this week and uh, the last tournament was the amount of downtime. Unfortunately, it's still an issue. They just need to, they need to speed things up. Yeah. Definitely. Uh, and I was at work <clears throat> watching everything this morning. So the Sunday and before like their hype battle that they have now, <clears throat> there was an hour of downtime. Oh my gosh. Just showing ads. The casters were like, Hey, we're just going out on a whim here. We don't know what we're doing, but we're just trying to fill space. And like, I understand because one of the guys that competed in it was Mad Cat. Mm-hmm. So Mad Cat was in the Challenger series. He's in the middle of the game when they're ready for the hype battle. So they're mm-hmm. waiting on him to finish his game. I was like, could have been thought out a little bit better. Yeah, probably. Uh, it was funny. I don't I don't know exactly if there's a story behind this or not, but I'm going to lean towards Yes. But I don't know if you caught it. When was this last match supposed to happen? The finals match was scheduled to happen at like. Three thirty or something like really early. And I'm assuming it went very late. But right after the Huntsman won and everything, it was a really big rush to get everybody out of there. Even the announcer said that, like, we're already being pushed out of the venue, but I have, you know, scump here. We're ready to do an interview. We're doing an interview. So. It's I, di- I didn't even think about that. The fact that you pay probably per hour to have that facility. And I'm assuming they're paying a lot more if they go over time. So yeah, for sure. that just so doesn't pull everyone out. Yeah, that just doesn't look good on Call of Duty as a whole. If if I'm the guy that runs that stadium or runs like the scheduling in that stadium, if you're say you're going to be out of there by five and you're still playing like your championship match is still going like that, that presents an issue. So. Yeah, from an, from an outsider sure. perspective, that's that's not necessarily optimal. Um, but aside from downtime, uh, there was a couple other cool things that happened at this event. The Call of Duty Challengers division singularity won again, very convincingly, um, which I thought was very cool. But then I couldn't help to think about last year where um, they had like everybody try out and people from the, I don't know what they called it, the open division or whatever. Yeah. Like if your team was consistently winning, you could fight to be amongst the pros. And so it's a little similarity was playing against those pros. So if you're, if you know that you're going to consistently beat people in the challenger division, which they do have a big prize pool for what incentive do they have to fill like a sub role on a, on a major team. I wouldn't do it. I don't think. Yeah, neither would I. You know what I mean? Like the last, the Minnesota one, I think they had like a $250,000 prize pool. Like that's good money. And if I'm only going to be making a minimum of 50K, uh, 50K a year subbing for another team and not playing, I'd stay in the challenger division. So I don't, I don't yeah, think exactly. that's, I don't think that's such a bad gig for singularity. You get but, to play and you get, or you have the chance to win a lot more money. Right. So hats off to Singularity. That's really cool to see that um, they're just mowing people down in that challenger yeah, division. Sure. Hopefully we can see a little bit more competition in that going going on in the future. Are Do you know if they're able to attend as many as they want? They can. <laughs> I'd be going to every single one. I would make this oh, year a sure. cash cow for Singularity, man. Just absolutely. It, I mean, if no one's coming close, just keep stomping over people. I'm sure... 
I know the challenger division is tough because I know they play a lot of games over a long time span. So yeah. I wonder how much their stamina is going to hold up. Like how much are they going to want to keep traveling to all these events? But I mean, if you're going to keep winning decent money, it's definitely they keep worth it. going. Exactly. Yeah. A lot yeah. of money to be made. So hats off to singularity. I will definitely make an effort next, um, uh, n- tournament to ch- try and keep up a little bit more with the challenger division. I don't know where they post a lot of their scores. Um, I know they post a lot on like Twitter about what's going on in the challenger division, yeah. but we'll try and keep you up to date on what's going on there. But, uh, yeah, let's hop into the, the meat of it, man. Let's go. Uh, let me switch cameras here so that you guys are able to see. We got a decent little overlay that we got for the second screen here. But anyway, so I want to talk about our picks going into this. So we picked the, the first four matches. Um, the first one, Paris Legion against the New York Subliners. Uh, you had Paris winning three to two. I had Paris winning three to one. And neither of us were correct. The Subliners came out with a fire uh, at yeah, this. That was crazy. I was about to say this super early match. It was super early for us. It started at like 6 a.m. or 6 something. A.m. But uh, for them, it was it was later in the day. But yeah, I didn't uh, I actually didn't get to watch this one. I'm sorry. I I wanted to sleep in. But um, yeah, it's interesting because subliners continued to suck after this match, apparently, and then didn't uh, do so hot. And then Paris really kind of turned it around and ended up getting in the semifinals and they got third overall. Paris, yep. Yeah, third overall, but. Um, I will say, I feel like subliners definitely, hello, uh, subliners definitely turned it up a little bit more this time around. I think, uh, two weekends ago was definitely a wake up call for them. And all of the casters were saying like, oh, you could do a lot with a week and a half of reflection on a tournament. So, um, it was cool. You could definitely see, um, people like temp, we, uh, did not talk highly of temp after last weekend, but he was really the one that I noticed that actually like stepped up a lot against yeah, these other teams. He definitely did. And that's what everyone was saying was he or like all eyes are going to be on him. Right. And so, he definitely stepped up to play. I would like to see the stats from this match. Uh, I don't think they post any of the actual like end game stats. Uh, that would be nice, but, um, yeah, good f- good for New York Subliners to come out and immediately take kind of a home team, I guess, since they're both yeah. in the same vicinity. But um, yeah, that was really cool to see, to wake up and see the Subliners um, beat Paris Legion. For sure. So let's move on. This is the first match that we have notes for. I did not get to watch the Dallas Empire match either, but Mark had Dallas beating... Um, Seattle three to one, right. And then I said, uh, three to two. So we were both right in that Dallas was going to win. I think we all kind of knew it going into it that I I did not see Seattle making that big of a leap forward from tournament one or opening weekend to this tournament. Um, I just think that Dallas is too well prepared. So we kind of saw this three one coming, but I'll let Mark talk about it a little bit more. Apparently, it was pretty close. So I didn't really get to watch it. Um, I got into work um, when they were interviewing Octane about it. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was at the very end. And he just said that he played or that Seattle as a whole played them very well. So that's all I really heard on it. I didn't get to rewatch uh, the stream or anything because I was busy watching all the other games going on. Right. But he said uh, it was definitely a close series. So um, later on, you wrote down in our notes um, when Seattle faced the gorillas. I'm assuming this was after the game and the instant reaction. Uh, Octane said Dallas could have been an easy 3-0 for us. Yes, uh, we'll get to that. Yeah, um, but yeah, it, it was definitely close. I mean, it looks like they set up well. I wish I had seen what exactly went wrong for Seattle or what exactly D- Dallas did to bounce back so hard from such a close game. 
I mean, look at that domination. Mm. Five points, that's ridiculous. Um, but yeah, so the, these games were really early on and they were just kind of like the, the pool play matches. So we honestly didn't get to watch them a whole lot. There yeah. was just, there was a lot of Call of Duty to be watched this weekend. Uh, let's move forward. The Chicago Huntsman, the champs. Uh, we both expected Chicago to go 3-0 against the LA Gorillas, and they did. And it looks like it was not pretty. No, they swamped them. Not pretty at all. Uh, the domination looks pretty close, but honestly, domination on Hackney, like the hills shift so quickly that I feel like that game is really just kind of a who can who can have that like one or two moments where they get them yeah. stuck in a spawn trap where they get a couple points ahead. Like so I don't, especially on Hackney, I think it's the A site uh, and back tire. Mm-hmm. But if you hold A and B, A is so hard to break. B is so hard to break. It's hard to flip spawns even. So that's the setup everyone's looking for. And that's one thing I really noticed with Chicago recently is if they spawn on the other side, so over by the C flag. Mm-hmm. They send no one to the C flag, maybe two people over to B and then three people all the way around. And they flip those spawns immediately. Wow. Yeah, Uh, they're always going for it. Yeah, but uh, even when like teams decide if they're holding A and B, when they try to to either get them in that spawn trap in the back by C or -hmm. if they try and push out to get like a trip cap. I feel like just getting a trip cap on that map is almost impossible just because you can get from one side or one flag to the other, the other flag so quickly. Yeah. Um, so that one's kind of a a crap shoot. I would say, um, man, the Huntsmen are looking good on Petrograd. They are. They're looking pretty good. We'll get into that. Really good. They played it a lot later on. Um, they played it a lot on Sunday, so we'll get into that. Yep. Uh, gorillas, Aches used to be the optic killer, but it doesn't look like he's quite there to kill the Huntsman quite yet. So, yeah. And then uh, Royal Ravens. I want to talk about them a lot. Um, one thing I, d- I did forget to mention um, in the beginning about the overall event is I mentioned the London crowd. We knew it was going to be awesome. We knew it was going to be hype, but it did that thing again where it's like I felt more sympathy, more sympathy for the home team. Like I felt yeah. that home team camaraderie and I kind of I consider my fan a big London Royal Ravens fan this weekend just by nature of watching it and how much they promoted that team. So it they was really did. They did a really cool job, especially with like the uh, London intro video. I thought it was really oh, cool. Yeah. yeah, the production and, team uh, is killing it. The Scraps and Weskin twin video was really cool. I really enjoyed how they did that. They reached out to the fans really well and I feel like it brought everyone that was a London fan all together. Right. No, it was, it was awesome. Um, yeah, I really felt like a, a big Royal Ravens fan after this weekend. And I'm curious to see if that's going to continue for each team, uh, moving forward. I don't see why it wouldn't. Um, yeah, I'm not, I think it'd be really cool to see how it grows. We obviously like the Huntsman a lot, but I, I don't really feel strongly towards any one team outside of that. So I'm wondering if I'm going to keep shifting like, Next week, I think, is in uh, L.A. Or no, it's in Atlanta. So it's like next week, am I going to become a huge FaZe fan? Like, that would be kind of cool to see. Yeah, exactly. I've definitely found myself rooting for the Ravens. Right. So I I think that's a cool side note. But back to this, um, Royal Ravens, you had you called this one. Uh, You had them going 3-1 over the Ultra. I said 3-0. I do think it was close, though. The one map they did drop, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, no, it was kind of the yeah, Um, they did lose the domination kind of kind of convincingly. Man, they must have. That's a lot of points for domination. Good for them. Um, I got some stats at the bottom here. Right. uh, Interesting side note. Toronto Ultra had the first confirmed subs uh, substitution for this weekend. We talked about how we wanted to see. Uh, them try out that new player, and it was who they have blast bants 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 and for medals, and uh, he did really well. Um, yeah, so uh, I was watching a couple videos um, talking about bants, and 
Uh, they were definitely saying since he's the first sub, again, everyone's going to be looking at him and he needs to show up. And sure enough, the kid does what he always did or did what he always does. Right. And I don't know me personally. I get I get what they're saying there. Me personally, I would see how the whole team does after that substitution, because like I said before, if they can figure out a good way to use all of these subs that they have, I feel like they're going to be dominant. Yeah, for sure. Oh, roster. I just wanted to to double check. Uh, Yeah, it was Bance. You were correct. I thought it was interesting. But um, yeah, uh, obviously it didn't work out too well for them. They went uh, zero and two this weekend. So I'm kind of unfortunate. But again, I would rather them do this now and see if it works rather than later on in the season. And then they realize it doesn't work. And then, yeah, yeah, they kind of lose their um, their fighting edge for the rest of the the season. So. So I have a couple statistics from that game that I would like to point out. Go for it, man. So Cammy, he was on Toronto. Mm-hmm. He last year played uh, on units with Nolson and I forget who else. Uh, he was one, especially last year, that I didn't think was too good. I didn't know why he was on like such a high tier team watching the or watching units play last year. Mm-hmm. He wasn't making a lot of noise on there. Um, but this year I saw that he was on Toronto, a pro team. I was like, all right, I need to see exactly how this kid does. He went nine and seven sniping against Wiskid and Piccadilly S and D. Now, Sni- I don't know about you, but that's something that I couldn't do. Well, and that's shocking to me. So this is another one. I, I started, I woke up and I started watching this match immediately. And then I just kind of listened to it while it was like getting ready for the day or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, and that statistic surprises me just because of how dominant Wuskin was this weekend, specifically on Piccadilly, specifically sniping. Exactly. I mean, Wuskin, that's what blew me away. So the fact that Cammy's able to do that over Wuskin is very impressive. Piccadilly's, quickly becoming one of my favorite maps to watch competitively i hate absolutely hate playing it i couldn't imagine playing it as a pro player just like running around and getting picked from you never know where yeah like literally everywhere you can get picked from so uh hats off hats off to them for grinding out piccadilly and finding finding out how to play it and it's definitely an entertaining map to watch so i hope yeah there's a lot of inner gunfight interactions in there right i just thought it's cool that he's putting up numbers like that to show like, Hey, I can hang with the best. Right. So um, um, one thing I uh, want to note about the Ravens specifically in this matchup, um, they ended up doing very well and beat a lot of good teams and put up really good fights throughout this weekend. But um, one thing I wrote down is they seem to lose control at times, like um, specifically in like the hard point, uh, the ultra would you know, switch up their game tactic and push uh, extra aggressive. And then I felt like, you know, that you see that moment when teams are in desperation mode and they just start making stupid plays and start flooding. I felt like that happened for the Ravens too much, you know? Um, Yeah, I I think it was a little bit of cockiness as well. uh, I didn't think about that. That might be for like, you know, trying to show off for the home team a little bit. Like they especially really especially on a team against or like a team like Toronto. Like you can't be getting shut out like that and be like, "Oh, I need to make a big play." Like, no. You push with your team and wipe them out. Right. No, yeah, I mean like these hard points especially got pretty close. Uh this first one is the one I think I wrote the note down on. Um it just it it felt like the team was entering that desperation mode for no reason when they could really just like, they are the better team. Toronto is is not as nearly on the same level as the Ravens. And I think they could have played that a little bit smarter. Um, And I want to note, how will that fare against a team like Atlanta phase where their main goal is to put you in that desperation mode as quickly as possible, you know? Yeah. So I'm very phase is going to pick that apart. For sure. I know. I'm ve- oh, I'm so hyped to see FaZe play this weekend. And everybody wants to see the FaZe uh, Huntsman matchup. And I hope that it gets there, man. 
I'm Me very, very excited to see FaZe because we only saw them for, what, two matches on yeah. opening weekend, and they just blew everybody out of the water. So very, very excited to watch them. I need to watch more of their live streams. I don't know if... I know yeah. Simp live more streams. I don't know if he... Uh, streams. Yeah, stream scrims or not, but... Yeah, so um, the, go ahead. The next thing that I have is uh, oh, yeah. Bants. He went 33 and 20 in Gunrunner Domination. Now, that's not the best stats that we've seen this weekend on uh, even Gunrunner on Domination. Mm-hmm. That's still really good. He top team there. Yeah, and you said he like needed said, to come out and make a make an entrance, and that's a pretty decent. He stat definitely one. did. He definitely did. I was definitely surprised to see how well he just came in and said, "Hey, don't worry about me. I can take this over." Yeah, he's a good player. And the last thing I want to say is my boy rated. <laughs> he's been underrated. I feel like the past couple of years he's been playing. Mm-hmm. Keep he's in been, mind. What's up? He's been around for a while. He has been. Yeah. yeah. But he's just been underrated the entire time. Keep in mind, he's an AR. He's not a get or he's not like push everywhere. Get a lot of hill time, all that fun stuff. Mm-hmm. But he went 28 and 25 on a Zier cave, a mainly su- or a mainly sub dominated especially with how the mp5 is right now Mm -hmm. that thing can go farther than the maddox last year it's crazy and he top teamed with a minute and 45 in the hill wow that's just unheard of for me yeah especially on his ear cave for an assault rifle player yeah that's not too bad no i was definitely proud of him on that one i did not see that coming yeah no he uh he did very well um this weekend a lot of the royal ravens stepped up this weekend oh yeah everyone had their time yeah um cool let's move forward to the match that everyone wanted to see i did not get to um look at how many viewers this peaked at i'm always curious to see about viewers because that's what's ultimately going to drive this um Call of Duty League to the next level. Um, I think it had pretty decent viewers from what I saw. Um, I don't think it matched up quite nearly to launch weekend. We kind of expected that to happen, but um, I'll keep an eye on that in the future. But Dallas versus uh, Huntsman, another one with everybody. I mean, going into this match, it's it's kind of like, okay, is Dallas going to figure it out or is Huntsman going to stop him again? And... Unfortunately for Dallas, it was the latter. Um, the hard point wasn't very close at all. Huntsman came out swinging uh, super, super quick. Um, and then, yeah, this this uh, Piccadilly map was interesting. It, I think it went Dallas went up like three rounds and then Huntsman brought it back three rounds and tied three, it up. Yep. And then Dallas brought it three rounds again right in a row and two then rounds. or two. Yeah, two rounds in a row. And then. The Huntsman came back three rounds to win it all. Um, yeah, that map was a hard it, attack. It should, ha- yeah, it should have been Dallas's map. I like how Dallas plays Piccadilly Search and Destroy. Mm-hmm. Um, but they definitely play to their strengths. I think Crim Six did very well that map, um, just because he's such a consistent AR and he de- he he ego chows a lot. I mean, he he yeah. knows he's good at the game and he they play to that strength. Um, so. Huntsman took over that map. Let's see. Uh, the domination. It was a domination <laughs> from the Dallas Empire. I mean, they it was they absolutely picked Huntsman apart on Hackney. And that was on Hackney where last week or two weekends ago. It was Chicago dominated Dallas. Yeah, it wasn't even funny. Um, the the launch weekend. But this weekend, um, I forget what they were saying about this, but um, I I wrote this down. I said uh, domination should have been a should have been a turning point for Dallas because this is where we see Dallas like playing as a unit um, is much better than how the Huntsman play aggressive and spread out. So what I was saying before about Hackney was 
I mean, anybody can get from one side of the map to the other side super quickly. So the fact that Dallas did that as a group and just picked apart the individuals or the duos in uh, Huntsman really played their played in their favor that time. So yeah, I thought that was an interesting little um, little snippet there. But uh, hard so, point Huntsman absolutely gun skilled them. They they know how to play. Uh, Petrograd really, really well. That you could tell yeah, that's, that's going to be looked maps. at in the picks and bands coming up for sure. Yeah, and the other thing I wrote down about the Huntsman, it's like I want to say I've talked about this before, but now that we're actually seeing some games, I can safely say that I feel so confident that almost everybody on the Huntsman is going to perform very consistently. Like in yeah. the past, I feel like it's been most teams have their one player that really step up in an event or even in a match that ultimately like helps them win it. But I feel, I genuinely feel like the Huntsman, it's like at least three of them at any given time will go off. And I don't know if I could say that about any other team right now. Like I think that's why Dallas lost this is like the young guns were really, or Hook and Shotzi were really struggling at times. And they were relying on like Crim six to who was doing really well in the S and D to kind of step it up. And I just, I feel much more confident that the the Huntsmen are going to win knowing that all five of them are going to perform very, very well. Even Scum said yeah. after the, the championship game, he's like, I didn't have a good match, but I'm glad I had all of my other players to step up. Like the fact that he could rely on safely rely on four other people as opposed to like two of their star players is like, it's really cool. And they still three, won a team like Dallas, right? Yeah. So yeah, is da- Dallas well, isn't at Atlanta next weekend. I wish they were. I'd like to see it. I'd like to see more of like the top tier teams kind of start colliding a little bit more just to see, you know, who's what it all looks like. Right. Like I want to see what Dallas against phase looks like. Maybe Dallas, um, the fact that they play so cohesively will kind of like stop phase in their tracks where they're used to having these other teams go into panic mode. Dallas kind of hits them with like a brick wall kind of strat. So yeah, I'm, I'd sure. be very interested to see that. Um, right. Yeah, go so for it. You got a couple th- th- stats? A couple things I took from the first Chicago and Dallas was, like I said before, uh, Chicago and Domination was really good about flipping spawns. They know how to get around the map really well, and that translates into hard points. So for those who don't know, in Hardpoint, it is very or it's played very strategically as to where you're going to spawn for the next hill. And so Chicago is always pushing like two or three hills even ahead to get those great spawns. And that's what really sets them apart, I think, from Dallas. They were winning those rotations in Hardpoint almost every time. I think it was it wasn't this match, but it was another Chicago match. I can't remember who they were playing against, but they went to a Astro listening and it was cool because Envoy immediately like when you saw like three Huntsman kills like right in a row, Envoy immediately. No, no, no. He would immediately shout out, "Okay, they're going to be spawning on this side. And then after they got out of that Astro listening, the casters picked it up immediately. They were like. Envoy really knows how this game is played. Like you can tell he spent a lot of time in this game knowing how the mechanics work. And he he's kind of flexing his spawn knowledge early on, which is yeah. really, really cool to see. And I think that helps him with these um, these hard point rotations, like you were saying. Like, And especially with a game like what we have right now, mm-hmm. it's hard to figure out those spawns. So he um, definitely yeah. knows what he's doing in this game. It's crazy. Or just knowing when... Like sometimes they rotate to the new hard point when there's 30 seconds left. You'll have oh, one, yeah. one if they know that these four guys are holding this down super well, they'll send another guy or the other guy will just know if he gets killed to go from spawn to the next hill and either go way in the back to secure like a spawn or whatever. But mm-hmm. yeah, they did very, very well with hard point rotations. Yeah, uh, it was crazy good from what mm-hmm. I was seeing. Uh, the next thing was a search and destroy on Piccadilly. Uh, we had Scump going 12 and 5. He was melt- along, melting. <laughs> along with Arsides, 13 and 6. I'm sorry, you're not going to lose that. 
melting. I mean, they were just picking search and destroy. Two guys had 25 kills combined. That means you killed the whole team five rounds for five rounds. Those two guys killed the whole team. (laughs) I mean, that's sick. Yeah, that's insane. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Oh, my. Like, I was writing this down and I didn't believe what I was writing. I was like, oh, my. This isn't right. There's no way. Yeah, tell them tell them about this next stat. This one's sick. This one's for Petro. Oh, this one's even more jaw dropping. Yeah, we're gassing Envoy. We're doing it. I told you, Envoy. Envoy was my pick last weekend or two weekends ago when you said who was the All Star yeah. player. I said Envoy. I I started off hating him. I could not stand him. I didn't <laughs> like that he just had critiques all the time. But man, something's working. The the kid now knows you how know, to play. He's smart. Yeah. Um, so hard point, St. Petrograd. Envoy had 12 deaths the whole game. 12 deaths in a game of hard point with 30 kills. Yeah. He went 30 and 12. He's over. It's like a 2.4 KD in hard this point. This kid is 30 disgusting kills. at this game. Yeah. There's no way even in a pub someone can go 30 and 12. Yeah, he was absolutely beaming. I definitely think I for the back. What? I said, there's Don't. no way even in a pub. And I was like, hold on. I'm pretty good a, on the sticks. Maybe in the, maybe in a pub <laughs> for sure. But uh, against the Dallas Empire, that's a little bit ridiculous. Yeah. Um, but I definitely think Envoy was the MVP for the Chicago Huntsman this week, even though, like I said, all four of or Ooh. all five of them really had their uh, we'll talk. We'll talk about it. Gunless did a Is lot there of a na- way to split that trophy. Gunless had some nasty stuff this weekend happen. Absolutely clutch. I saw for the first time, I think ever gunless get hyped. Like, I don't, I don't think I he saw g- smile for the first. I time. know. Like, I, I haven't seen him get up out of his chair. He didn't get out of the chair, but he was definitely like he was showing some energy. I, I liked to see that. Yeah. Good, for, good for him. They both had a really good weekend. But I think great. Envoy. I think Envoy was consistently performing super super well um throughout and i think um i think the reason is is because like they can rely on him just to go ballistic they're like all right see you have fun like (laughs) we'll we'll do we'll get the obj you just go out and melt everybody and he does he runs around the map like a crazy man and just beams everybody that's what nameless was saying actually in this series he was saying that envoy stepped it up because they got destroyed in domination Envoy said, all right, screw you guys. I'm just going to go take it all over. I'm out. Yeah. And that's exactly what he did. That's funny. Yeah. Good for them. I definitely think that uh, Dallas could have used the domination as like a turning point. I just um, I think after the hard point, they kind of entered that chaotic mode a little too soon. Yeah. Started flooding hills. And I think Envoy just beamed him. I mean, that. Petrograd's a really short range map for the most part. I mean, as long as you avoid like the really long range gunfights, but yeah, just going through the building, I think he was too fast for him. I don't, I don't think anybody could catch him up or catch up to the him. The other thing I noticed in uh, this series was the young guns on Chicago. They I mean, honestly were kind of looking better than Krim, Clay, and Hook. You said Chicago, you mean Empire? Oh, yep. So you're meaning Shotzi and, Shotzi and Illy, Illy, the Halo, Halo boys. Illy, uh, it was a big battle, uh, especially in this match between like Illy and the like other snipers, whether it was RC or formal. Yeah, we'll get into that one. But yeah, no, I, I, I think I agree. I think uh, they Krim, stepped it up. Krim kind of had slow starts on maps. Clay had a couple maps where he was doing very well. But yeah, when when they when those two weren't doing well, I feel like the other three, I think Hook was pretty consistently decent from what I remember. Yeah. I thought Hook was pretty decent. But yeah, Illy and and Shotzi definitely stepped it I'm up. I'm watching times. Illy's movement. This dude has butter on his feet, bro. <laughs> He's just sliding everywhere. Yeah. That's... I'm like, how how does one move like this and not be on keyboard and mouse? <laughs> He's got, That's what it looks like. He's got butter on his feet. I love it. It's crazy just watching Shotzi and Illy move throughout the map. Yeah. And this is their first time in the pro league. 
and they're making noise. Yeah. It's crazy. Uh, yeah, good for them. Beyond me. All right, let's let's uh, let's move on. We talked enough about any time during the Huntsman, just expect it to be a longer segment. Sorry, we apologize. Uh, moving on, uh, London Royal Ravens, New York Subliners. Again, this could have been, I felt like, a victory for the Subliners. They just... They, they got back on their heels too much and entered that desperation mode. And then Wait, they, hold on. Who or what did we vote for Chicago and Dallas? Uh, we didn't we didn't pick that. We didn't pick um, because they weren't scheduled to play. It was whoever won their first initial match. Oh. Right. Well, look at us. Yeah, right. All right, sorry. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, moving into this match... It started off slow. They had a really dope intro for the the Ravens. Everybody was getting hyped. And then subliners come out and win map one. And a pretty, the score doesn't reflect it a whole lot, but a pretty dominating fashion um, on Ramaza. Uh, Temp absolutely melted everybody on his path in this. I think we have a clip of him um, to vote for the top 10 plays of the weekend. But he absolutely made me eat my words from last weekend because he, yeah, he stepped up in a big way. And at the end of it, it was funny. He stands up and was trying to get the crowd and the crowd's like booing at him and everything. Oh Um, yeah. Definitely. Temp Temp just feeds off of it. Temp and the crowd got into it. I'd say a little bit more than aches in Minnesota. did. Yeah. That London crowd is ruthless, too. I would not be able to do that. Hats off to them. <laughs> they were ruthless to Maven, and he's I not know. even playing. I know. Yeah, they were. That was It was a funny crowd, even though I didn't know what they were saying most of the time because of that <laughs> accent. Who are you? Are you it or? Like, it was just like, I don't, I don't know what you're saying, dude. Definitely a funny one. But, um, yeah, uh, Ravens kept control. They, they win the domination pretty dominantly on Hackney again. Um, they just held, they just held two flags more than anybody else, like, or more than the subliners rather. Um, then yeah, pretty dominant on this, this hard point. Uh, I forgot to mention on the S and D for this one, the twins absolutely clutched up in a major way. I think the subliners were up in rounds and, um, it was a two V four. 2v3 or 2v4 and um they clutched it up and i think that's going to be in the top 10 clips not to um uh spoil it for you guys but yeah the uh the search and destroy was really cool um it was cool to see the twins kind of uh do very well Wazkin absolutely was my pick for the um player of this team for the event for sure because was oh, yeah. was turning up in a huge way, getting a lot of good snipes. uh, And it was really cool to see. Yeah, I didn't uh, get to watch that game too much. Um, Was that Saturday? What's that? Was that game Saturday? This one, I believe, was today. No, yesterday. Sorry. Yeah, again, I was at work. Uh, it was cool. Uh, a couple other things I had wrote down. Sorry, I'm trying to read notes and talk at the same time. Um, Dil- uh, so Wuskin is definitely my top pick for this team, but um, Dylan is a close second because Dylan, his ability to stay alive in S and D is what makes this team so good. Like the yeah. fact that he can challenge. And really quickly decide, okay, I mi- I missed one shot, so I need to get out of here. And he will just snake his way around a corner. And the casters are just blown away. They're like, how is he still alive? Like, that's insane to me. So, yeah, that's a big ordeal in s and And I'm not saying that from like a layman's perspective on s and Just, it's incredible how he can do that. Right. Just there's not many people say if I go in and miss three shots, like you're going to be punished for that. Mm -hmm. He doesn't get punished for that because he is so good at getting away out of those sticky situations. Or it's like he'll, he'll challenge something and then he'll, he'll win the gunfight and then weasel away. And the, the, Mm -hmm. the casters are like, how, how is he not being traded? Like that's insane. So, uh, Dylan absolutely had a monster event this week. He should be very proud if both of them should be, 
The only thing I, I, I don't think Scraps had a really good weekend. There was a couple. I don't think so either. He was a, getting a lot of times. He was put in like he was the last alive in S and D with like five people or four people still left. Yeah. So he was put in a lot of bad situations. But um, I definitely think he did not compete as well as like Waskin did. And um, Waskin had a really cool um, post game interview. They were like, "You've you've played Call of Duty for a long time. You've played with your brother. You've played without him." we haven't really seen you like step up in the way that you're doing recently. So what's your key to the success? And he just, he basically just said, I have played this game more like the, the amount of time I put into this game versus the amount of time other people have. It just, it's starting to show the fact that he really wants to be good. And it was kind of heartbreaking to see after, after the event he tweeted, he was like, I just want to win. I just want to win. Because I mean, scraps was on phase. And they were doing very yeah. well. I think they won two championships with Scraps, I believe. I be- Fa- I knew FaZe won two of them. Maybe I'm thinking of um, World War II. But anyway, I mean, Scra- Scraps has definitely been on the teams that people have been talking about. And Wuskin has kind of been in the shadow a little bit. So yeah. he's definitely coming out with more of a fire now that he has a full stacked roster behind him um i think he's gonna be one to look for in the future so and it's cool to be seeing him or to like see him pop off right now like you said he was in the shadow or he was living in like the shadows of his twin brother but now the tides have almost turned Weskins is being rated as one of the best call of duty modern warfare players Mm -hmm. it's crazy so super cool to see him uh step up um, it was cool to see Royal Ravens beat the subliners. I think the subliners will be a pretty decent team. I do not see yeah. them in the future just being one of the best. I think they'll be maybe fifth, like right in the middle of the pack kind of deal, fifth or fourth by the end of the season. We'll see. I don't know. Uh, moving on, we had the Seattle surge against the gorillas. The surge. The first win of the year. Hats off to them. I did not get to see this game, but my boy. Oh, I did. My as boy soon Karma. as I got into work, I put it on. 7 a.m. All, right. All right, let's hear it. You got some stats for this. Ooh. So first map was Azir Cave. Now, I talked about that earlier with. No, first map was Petrograd. I have tuned into it a little bit late. My bad. Uh, <laughs> Azir Cave was the uh, the fourth map. The second hard point. Yep. Anyway, Gorilla. I talked about Azir Cave and about how it's a little bit harder for the M4 players, the ARs, to do really well. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Octane put me to shame. Oh, the, my the goodness. Rated. Octane went 41 and 25 with a minute and 18 in the hill. So I, I called this a little bit. I told you Octane play is known for playing a very aggressive AR and it's, it's, you're able to do it with that M4 in this game. It was not like that with the ICR. No way he could have played this map with the ICR. No way. Not at all. But, Um, but the fact that he was able to clutch up with that MP4 playing in those really tight hard points, good for Octane 41 and 25. What a beast. Uh, but I say that. And he kind of plateaued near the end. Mm -hmm. Like he started off climbing straight up and then kind of just went flat. The guy that set them over, though, had a very slow start, but ended up carrying it was Karma. Mm -hmm. Mr. Three Rings went 37 and 34. So combined at the end, Karma and Octane, just between the two of them, had 78 kills. That's kind of ridiculous. Karma did only have 15 seconds in the hard point, but that's because Octane was in it. Karma's doing all the work around it. They right. dominated that Azir Cave hard point. I feel like Karma, is, and they're kind of letting him do this a little bit more. He, he did it a lot last year, but in games previous, he wasn't this kind of player where it's just like your sole goal is to be a nuisance on the map and cause like a little bit of chaos, like, Go even though the, they're pushing here, go around and flank them just so they 
have to realize that you're back there and kind of switch their focus a little yeah, bit. Yeah, they like, have to do something else. He did that a little bit in um, Black Ops 4, but he's definitely continuing to do it here where he's that he's that one player that's just con- continuing to be a nuisance. Like Yeah, and that's why I'm not worried about the difference between his kills to deaths in the 37 and 34. Mm-hmm. He got in a ton of engagements, and that's exactly what they need. They just need him to get in engagements and bring the attention to him. Yeah. So it's great that he can win 37 of those engagements. Yeah. That's... um, Blew my mind. Good for him. So, Um, uh, go ahead. The... Or we were talking about this also a little bit earlier, but I have a quote from Octane. It was in his post-game interview... And the lady who was interviewing her or interviewing him said, how will you carry this win to Dallas? And he said, Dallas could have easy or could could have been an easy three zero for us. That kind of blew me away. I was like, hold on, Octane. Three zero on Dallas. Chicago hasn't three zero Dallas. I'm not, I don't think you're above Chicago. So that one kind of knocked me off, but it's definitely uh, ambitious. It looks like they need to like, if they're going to round 11 every single time and search against the gorillas, no way they're winning that. Like you can't three Oh Dallas. You can't be doing that. Dallas is such a strong S and D team. Like uh, that's a, that's a pretty bold statement. I don't know if he truly meant it, but. I like Octane. Maybe a lot. just friendly banter. Maybe maybe just friendly banter, <laughs> yeah. But um, all in all, at the end of Seattle and Gorillas, Seattle came out on top. LA. Yeah. They LA, got knocked out. LA was gone. Bad weekend for Aches, and the the crowd yeah. let them know too. The yeah, crowd for was sure. the crowd was ruthless. It was great. Um <laughs> Let's talk. Let's move on. Uh, It's kind of dragging out a little bit. We'll try and speed this up because we got a lot to talk about down here. Uh, Paris Legion knocks out the Toronto Ultra. So it was not a good weekend for the the Gorillas and the Ultra. They did not make it into bracket play. Mm -hmm. Um, Didn't get to see this one. I think it was pretty dominant as well. Um, Yeah. Nothing, nothing too bad here. I mean, the last hard point. Yeah, that's almost getting 100 point club. I thought Toronto was it must just be their maps because I feel like Toronto's really solid, uh, especially on like Gunrunner. I feel like they're a pretty solid um, uh, hard point team. I I watched them play Azir Cave as well, and they mm-hmm. seem to know that hard point very well. I think it's just like consistency of maps. I think they can't. That's my biggest thing with Toronto is our consistency. Right. You can't be good at some maps and then absolutely awful at others. Cause if they, mm-hmm. if the other team knows that you're really bad at these maps, then they basically win in the band band protect uh, system yeah. like before the matches even start. So they need to figure it out. Um, it was cool to see that they did their, their substitutions, but obviously it didn't work out too well for them. Yeah, uh, only one thing to point out in that match was Dens on Paris went 14 and four uh, and S&D on Ramaza. That was huge. That definitely brought the uh, momentum towards Paris and brought them to destroy the ultra in the heart point. Dens did really well this weekend. He did. I heard his All name. Of Paris did. I heard Denz's name a lot. And I think we have a clip um, for Denz as well to go in the top 10, if I remember correctly. But yep. Again, yep. You'll have to you'll have to watch that video Tune to find that out. later. We will. Uh, the goal is, again, to hopefully get that video done and then we'll watch it on stream and kind of give you a little bit more in-depth um, view of why we picked those to be the top 10. All right. All let's right. move on. Ultra get knocked out. Dallas and Seattle Seattle. again. They played them again. Mm -hmm. Yep. I watched this one too. I'm pretty sure. It it was close. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I I watched this one as well. Um, Yeah. It looks like uh, they put up a decent fight in that hard point. Again, (laughs) no way. Like, no way I would consider 
Seattle oh. a good S and D team at all. I did. They obviously need to yeah. work on their S and D, and they're all masterminds. Like that blows me away that that roster is that stacked, and they haven't figured out a good enough game plan. Maybe maybe that's what's hindering them. The fact that they're all so smart at S and D, they're playing as individuals. Whereas Dallas Empire, yeah. they basically Crim Six and Clayster definitely just tell the other three what to do. Like, hey, we're gonna go be this map and. Clayster and Krim speak with such like an authority that the other people, I wouldn't question them. I'd be like, okay, I'm yeah, going exactly. here with them. Like, um, no way that Seattle Surge could 3 0 Dallas Empire. No. You got some stats uh, you, you want to talk about here? Um, not really. Uh, Seattle was, unlike Chicago, was not good at getting the rotations. But one thing that I did notice is they were really good at breaking the power hills and not letting Dallas get a lot of points on those, which was a big point and a uh, hard point. I felt like um, I felt like Dallas but, is really bad at holding hills. I can see that. Yeah, I feel like that's a consistent problem for them. I feel like multiple teams uh, Dallas would have a killer setup. And then one person would get killed. All of the team would look that way. And then they just get picked off. I feel like Dallas has a hard time holding hard points. Yeah. That was weird. Um, Shotzi basically ran over all of Seattle in the Arklov SMD. Yeah. So nothing really to hit there. Um, Octane, again, going off on St. Petro. Uh, went 35 and 13. Putting up his usual numbers. Hmm. But all in all, Seattle ended up losing. Seattle. Yeah. yeah. And you noted that it was pretty close on the Petra yeah. kind of hard point. It looks like Seattle's pretty decent at this because they won the Seattle Dom played well. them really well, I feel like, besides in the Arklov search and destroy. Interesting. Yeah. Definitely a real that was one of my favorite matches to watch this whole weekend. So it looks like Dallas needs to work on their Petrograd, especially if they're going to continue to play Huntsman, who yeah. we now know. I feel like this was a map that we did not see a lot of week at, first weekend. No, um, definitely wasn't. I was hyped to see this um, be a pick this weekend, and now I'm even more hyped to see that the Huntsmen are pretty dominant Good at on it. this map. Yeah. yeah, they're really dominant on this map. So um, <laughs> takeaways for Dallas Empire, definitely work on your hard point and making sure people don't break hills. Yeah, exactly. Just hold those spawns and keep punching. Um, moving on the Paris Legion. New abs- York and Paris. Yeah. Paris absolutely uh, stomped them. I mean, it was nothing we need to even cover there. We really, yeah, we have no notes for this one just because it was like, a pretty, it was so quick. It was a pretty quick, they got close on the hard point. Um, I feel like Ramaza hard points again, kind of back and forth. Like, yeah, you got people on like six different levels there. So it's just like easy to pick people off. And I feel like it's always like one person in the hard point, if anything. Um, it's just a weird map. But yeah, absolutely. Just stomped. New York subliners went home. <laughs> all right. Uh, all right. Let's talk top about four. the uh, top four teams. So. Uh, we will pick our top four for the Atlanta uh, tournament next weekend. Uh, we didn't pick a top four for this weekend, but you and I both predicted that it was going to be Chicago and the Ravens in the final. And it, that wasn't too far off. Uh, Ravens yeah. were, were close to getting in the final. So, so close. Uh, they went up against Dallas. And uh, it looked good at first. It did, dude. It, Man. It did look really good. Um, well, let's see here. Yeah, this this hard point was kind of ridiculous. It just kept going back and forth. Like I said, um, it, it there were so many kills that happened on this map. I would like to see, like, I wish they posted scoreboards for each of these. Yeah. That would be really cool uh, to see. I have Wuskin went 30 and 18 in the hard point for the loss. 30, 30 and 18. Like, that's just hard. Yeah. Was can have someone going 30 and 18 and losing. Waskin's a pretty good slayer. But again, I would like to see that scoreboard. Um, maybe I should start taking screenshots of these. Maybe we'll do that for the next one. 
But I wonder if Weskin was just he was either that guy that was running around the map and going up and down like all those different like levels and everything. I wonder how much how much he was in the actual hard point, because, again, I feel like it's easy to get a lot of kills if you're that guy that runs around and just tries to play for picks. But yeah, um, yeah. London oh. did ramble off rounds on Dallas. Uh, search and destroy. What Definitely the fir- uh, first search and destroy. Mm-hmm. It was like a six oh six one, right? Right. Like that's just crazy that London just swept the floor with Dallas Whoa. and search and destroy. We're we're getting we're getting confused. There's a lot of oh, that's <laughs> that's one of the problems I had this weekend was keeping track of who's who on uh, like who's playing what. We're getting a little bit confused. So I was saying. Um, for the, you wrote down was went 30 and 18 in the hard point for loss. They won the first two maps pretty good. Co- like, yeah, the, the first was, hard point was close. And then the S and D second map was five and six. It was really close. Oh, sorry. I'm getting a little dark. Maybe, here. maybe they came back from a deficit. I don't remember. Um, the was dropping 30 and 18 was the second, uh, hard point. Right, right, right. Um, but no, I the um, the S and D was pretty close both times, and especially on Piccadilly, it it came down to again, Wuskin and Illy for sniping. I mean, it was just ridiculous. It was back and forth. Like you would see them in the uh, the X ray vision that the Codcasters have or whatever, and it's like my heart would just stop there for a minute. I'm like, okay, who's gonna win this pick? And yeah, it was super close. Definitely crazy. It was very uh, heartbreaking to see you know, London go down. They really wanted to win it for the home crowd. Uh, even though I don't think, I, I wonder if they th- genuinely thought they were going to win. Cause I guarantee like the mindset for me would be like, I just want to beat Dallas empire and I want to at least make it to the finals. Yeah. I feel like that would be better than not even making it to the finals in the first place. But I don't think Ravens could beat Huntsman. No, I don't think so. I think it would be maybe with the crowd, but I have no clue. Right. I think it would be close. I'm going to turn on my light. My light right here is dying. So (sighs) much better. We'll get that white balance. We'll be much better. Um, But yeah, it was it was white balance off my teeth, bro. Wow. Pearly. Wow. Um, (laughs) But it was it was a pretty close match. Um, I kind of. I, I don't want to say I expected Dallas to win because obviously we picked uh, Ravens to win it, but yeah. it was a pretty close match altogether. All right, let's all go. in all, London. Right. Mad respect, though. I think they definitely. Oh yeah. At the end of the day, I think their driving force right now, early on in the season, is just to prove that they are. They should be talked three. about when they're talking about top teams. Yeah. And I think I think they have done it to an extent. Again, we haven't seen FaZe play very much. We haven't we there's just a lot of, of things we haven't seen enough to make that like an actual statement that Ravens deserve to be talked about in like the top three teams even. Yeah. So let's move on to Huntsman and <laughs> Huntsman and Legion. <laughs> My, Mark. Oh. So Mark and I try and watch these together. Uh, we don't we don't get to sometimes. Sometimes we'll just um, watch it in our own places. But we we literally can't FaceTime because we need to focus on the match so much. Our blood was pumping so much during this map after every anytime anything happened, we'd be like texting each other back and forth. Like, oh, yeah. oh, my God, I can't believe this happened. Uh, it was close. Legion put up a good fight. I'm not I'm not going to lie. Um, Huntsman, obviously superior in S and D. Um, but I think that the Legion is one of the first teams, um, in addition to like Dallas, for example, to match the Huntsman in terms of just gun skill. Yeah. I think that they, um, this was the Huntsman first match of the day and, uh, Paris had already played three, two matches today. Three. So Mm -hmm. it was like. They were nice and warmed up. They were ready to come in and start swinging, and they did. They won 250 to 216. That's the first hard point that the Huntsmen have lost this season. 
right? Heck, Par- Paris gave them both their losses in hard point. Uh, I want to say that that's correct. The the first, yeah, the first um, hard point loss. Yeah. So that's insane. Um, I texted you. I was like, I think they're going to be fine. They're just they just need to get warmed up. Um, I don't think they were warm after that S and D just because their tactics, like they just outsmarted them and S and D and Petrograd yeah. wasn't even very close. Um, <laughs> so did you write this down in our notes? You were like, Oh no, never mind. What? But I, w- I was reading the wrong thing. Uh, um, I got a funny one to put up for you. Go for it. So we were talking about how Paris gave Chicago both their losses in the hard point. Yes. And the gun runner hard point. Dens went 40 and 19. 40 and 19? 40 oh and 19 against the champions. Like I that's t- just. I told you, I, oh. I heard Dens's name way too much this weekend. I didn't know he was a top tier player, but apparently he, uh, Came out and showed everybody. Who knows anymore, man? I don't. I don't know. I feel like everybody's just kind of trying to prove a point, trying to prove that uh, they deserve to be talked about when they're talking about top top players or top teams. Yeah. Um, uh, and the last thing I want to hit on for this matchup was Scump going thirteen and three on St. Petrograd Search and Destroy. Oh yeah, homeboy a- went on a ten kill streak. Yeah, it's pretty good. Uh, I love your comment here. It says Chicago lets Paris know why they are the best at Dom. And they yes. did. It wasn't even close. I mean, Huntsman had a trip cap for like, I want to say like two whole minutes or something. Yeah, uh, it was it was insane. Like they couldn't. The, the Huntsman played this one so interesting because when you're playing just with a pub, the natural um, thing you want to do is to go straight for your home base flag and then straight to B. Whereas mm-hmm. they they really fought for kind of they just let whatever a. happened to be. They fought for A and C yeah. for I mean ever. They would have somebody posted up in the very back watching over that flag and then That's crazy. Like on both sides. So it wasn't even close. Like it was it was uh, kind of messy there for Paris. So Yeah, that was the one thing that was annoying me with Paris was all week and they just kept saying how they were the best team out of all of them in domination. Right. I was like, boy, you be- you better back up that statement. And sure enough, they did. Chicago punished them. Right. Um, so, again, I, I wasn't really nervous. I felt I wasn't I was kind of upset. I felt like the Huntsman deserved to win the Gunrunner. I feel like they just kind of um, let yeah. it get let it get out of control they started pushing at different times too when like Hill would rotate towards like that back warehouse. I don't know call out super well for that map. Um, but when that that spawn like other on the other side of train tracks where it's in that warehouse, I felt like they just didn't have a good if they were already there set up, they could hold it really well. But they did not have a good game plan of how to they couldn't get back there. Right. They just pushed it at different times. And then when you get killed back there, you're spawning on the other side of the planet. Mm-hmm. Like you have such a trek to get there. I mean, you may as well just give it up and go to the next hard point. Yeah. Um, so I don't I think that Huntsman need to work on Gunrunner. Um, I think it's just too big of a map for them to to play that sporadic. I think they need some sort of like system where they play as a group. Mm-hmm. Just my two cents, but but all in all, Paris, Paris out. They get They're out. They get uh, third, fourth, tied for third, fourth. Mm-hmm. And then <laughs> the championship match everybody <laughs> wanted to see. <laughs> so going into this match, Mork and I were talking back and forth, and it was. Mark said it was going to be a hu- a bigger deal if Huntsman won it over Dallas, and I said that I totally disagree. I feel like the rivalry will be bigger than ever. I feel like that fire between them will just escalate because you know if Dallas come out and win this match and win the tournament, like they could lose to Hunts- Like That's the nature yeah. of Call of Duty is you can win as many games as you want, but as long as you... like if you don't win it champs all like none of those wins matter yeah, it it's kind matter. of the same thing here where it's like 
Dallas doesn't care that they would have gone one and three to the Huntsman. They would just see that they won a championship. So you know yeah. they would be up on their feet just talking so much to the Huntsman. But uh, yeah, the boys came out and did what they do best. Their their S and D yeah their S and D's improving. Dallas still uh, put up a pretty decent fight on all of the maps. Really, yeah. Uh, Petrograd again, just a great pick for the huntsman this weekend i wonder if they i wonder if they held that i wonder if they didn't pick that the first weekend out on purpose and then you know maybe worked on it a little bit more this past two weeks or whatever Mm -hmm. but yeah they were they were dominant on this map for sure it was definitely a very close series i wanted to say um one of your we'll go down the list here one of your comments um, on Azir, both teams are really good at getting full team wipes. Five mans. Yeah, it's There's, crazy. So like I said, in Dallas, and it happened a couple times either way, and it didn't happen every time for Dallas where they couldn't hold a hill. They had a couple where they held it for the whole time, and that's why they kept this game so close. Um, but yeah, I definitely feel like the gun skill is there for either of those two teams. It just comes down mm-hmm. to who plays smarter. Um, I remember on this hard point um, was one I was talking to you about where they rotated, rotated very, very early on. Like they would send gunless over into the cave because yeah. that's a really hard hill to. to and even though Dallas right. had the Dallas had the spawns for that hard point, it was the fact that the, the huntsmen were there so early to help, like, you know, put pressure on them. The fact that they even cut the time that uh, Dallas could have gotten in half. So. Yeah, was a, exactly. They're really just cool. holding those uh, power points again. Like, if you don't have the spawns on one of those power hills, the best you can do is make sure the team that has those spawns is not getting the full 60 seconds. Oh, absolutely. But that's, that's exactly what they were doing. Right, right. Um, so it was a very close S&D map. <laughs> this Arklov S&D... Oh. I mean, my heart was just like pounding out of my chest, man. It was so back and forth. Like, was Arcides going to get the snipe? Was Illy going to get the snipe? Was, you know, was Gunless going to get Krim off the bomb? Envoy was always flanking. So Clayster was always looking for him. And most of the time, Clayster (laughs) would beam him out of it. Like he would just see it and figure out that, oh, Envoy's missing. Where's he at? Oh, there he is. And get him. So it was just like, okay, was Envoy going to win this gunfight against Clay? Um, Gunless, I don't want to spoil it. And here's the reason why we don't have the uh, top 10 plays this weekend because they haven't uploaded the videos for it yet. Gunless went huge in this SND. Absolutely huge in this SND. He made a monstrous 1v3 to keep Dallas from going up in rounds. Um, the 1v3 was ridiculous um i wish i had the clip of it we'll we'll make sure to show it to you guys next weekend yeah. but he went 14 and 7 on our club s and it's disgusting especially how or like especially against how dominant dallas looked against the huntsman two weekends ago on our club and i tell you he uh he loved you know and again i don't know call out super well but uh, it's that mound that is able to look mm-hmm. over the broken house and around the side of that broken house. Gunless yep. played that so well. Crim6 went up there like very first round and got two or three kills right off the bat. And Gunless was like, oh, well, if he could do it, I'm definitely doing Did it. the exact same thing. And just, better. yeah, I mean, he went up there and he was able to work around that hill and he would have sometimes like three Dallas people shooting at him and he would still get one kill back down, reload go up again get one more kill um he was he was kind of a beast in that map so he definitely ran that map when he was alive yeah hats off to uh gunless for that map good for him uh Mm -hmm. and then moving into this dom uh you have a note here envoy holding and flipping spawns at saint petro that's all he was doing that game bro he was so he was a thorn in dallas's side because yep. I don't even think he touched B. I don't think he got anywhere near mid. No. That boy was just running between A and C, getting every, killing everyone in sight. Well, and we 
we, you and I came into competitive call of duty. I would say a little bit later. Um, I don't think we ever saw domination as a competitive mode, correct? No. So I think it's cool how much that people play for neutrals just as much as they play to cap flags. So yeah, Envoy, Envoy would flank all the way around, get in their spawn, get two kills, neutralize the flag, and then get out of there. Whereas an unexperienced Dom player like me, I would have stayed there and tried to cap it. But then yeah. the, the Empire knows exactly where he is. He would get in while they're dead, neutralize, and then go run and hide and try and get two more kills and then go back and cap it. I mean, yeah, exactly. Yeah, he was he was a nuisance on that map. He they, was running that map. So, um, yeah, Envoy, Envoy went huge there. That's awesome. I don't know. And finally, I ended up seeing one thing that I thought was going to happen uh, within Dallas was Krim and Clay butt heads a little bit and one of their listenings. Do they really? I didn't know if you caught it, but um, Clay was like, hey, wait on us. Like, we're coming in and then we can cap B. Yeah. And uh, Krim goes, no, I'm jumping out. Immediately gets gunned. He's like, oh, man, I was stunned. <sighs> and you hear Clay. He's like, no, you weren't. Well, I was like, oh. I don't remember hearing that, like them banter back and forth. But I remember coming out of that listen. And that's the first thing that the caster said again. It's like you hear Clay talking to Krim, like, just wait for us. And I told you earlier before that Krim knows that he's very good at this game. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And he ego challenges all the time. So it's like it doesn't surprise me that when he ego challenges somebody like the Huntsman that he's going to get beamed. So, yeah, and it definitely showed it in his stats. Krim went 14 and 30 that's, on that St. Petro Dom. That's not incredible. That, <laughs> that's not incredible. The poster has to give you more drive than 14 and 30. The poster. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That's so funny. A little inside joke. Yeah. Um, cool. Uh, and then the Huntsman secured 3 0. That's their first. Dallas three. will see a fudging later. Yeah, that's their first 3 0 against uh, Dallas of the season. Uh, every other time it's been a 3 1. But the Chicago Huntsman take it. And then I want to talk a little bit about what, what was your expectation of how the post game was going to go for this tournament? Did you what have you it? So like in the past, we're used to if you win a tournament, obviously there's like a trophy there. They go out, they give like interviews and everything. Uh, I mentioned at the very beginning that they were kind of crushed on time and they were being pushed out of the venue a little bit. So I don't know. Um, did you think they needed a little bit more of a celebration? I felt like it, it just got done. They did a post game interview and that was it. And now, well, are you just talking about the Dallas and Chicago one or no? Um, yeah, 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 I'm saying so like after the championship game, do you think that there needed to be a little bit more of a ending to the tournament than what there was? Yes and no. I mean, like you said, they could have been paying for that venue by the hour mm -hmm. and they definitely went over. So. <sighs> I, I would have enjoyed seeing like a big party or something, not like a party, but like a celebration. Mm -hmm. But I like or like you said, they had to push everyone out of there. So gotcha. Was there something planned? Probably. I, yeah, I'd be interested. I, I don't know. Um, there was talk within the COD community of whether they should count these as like actual championships so like mm -hmm. Crim Crim6 has won like 34, 33 championships. Um yeah, and it was just uh should they count these or not? And I don't I don't think so. I think they need to count the big ones. I think that they need to count the mid-season tournament where they bring everybody back and then COD Champs as the only two like actual tournaments since like you can't you can't call these full tournaments cuz all the teams weren't there. Yeah. You exactly. know, like in Black Ops 4, when you would go to these tournaments, you would even face off against people from the open bracket. So, like, it was just reassuring that you were the best team out of all of the teams playing this game. Whereas if you win one of these, if FaZe were here, we don't know if they would have won it, you know? Yeah, exactly. It's it's just completely different having 
so few teams, especially in the tournaments. Right. So, all in all, very cool event. I very, very much enjoyed it. Watched Unspent a lot of Call dominated. Movie. To be honest, I didn't really mind the early games. I kind of liked it that it was like wake up early in the morning and that what? Maybe like start them at nine, not six, bro. May, okay, maybe not six, but I liked <laughs> it. I woke up and Call of Duty was already starting. I made myself some yeah. coffee and just kind of sat down and watched some Call of Duty. I can't complain too much. And watched your day away. Yeah, literally watched all day. It was snowing here in Indiana, so I had some nice oh, snow. Oh, it was blizzard. Yep, snow, coffee, and Call of Duty. That's not a bad Sunday. Well, see, I had to drive 18 miles per hour on the interstate coming home. Well, don't know what to tell you there, brother. All right, um, so to recap, we will be doing another podcast this Sunday. And um, since there's no tournament next weekend, we will be talking a little bit more about the stats between me and Mark and we'll get like an Excel document going and uh, keep logs of our picks and then keep you guys up to date on who's winning score wise. And then, yeah, like I said, we're doing a giveaway for anybody that follows us or subscribes to us on YouTube and follows us on uh, Twitch. Both of them are free. Um, All you have to have is an account for both. So uh, again, I definitely don't see a ridiculous amount of people doing either of those things. So I don't think your uh, chances are too bad winning this giveaway. We'll probably either do um, a piece of merch once we get that all finalized or we'll, we'll think of something else, but hopefully that'll be if you have any suggestions as well. Yeah. For what we should give away. I, I said a scuff. That would be a dope giveaway. Loser by loser buys a scuff and then gives it away. That would be be cool. That'd be funny. Custom scuff. Yeah, we can sign it too or something. That would be kind of funny. But uh, we'll have that figured out for next weekend as well as we will have the top 10 video sometime this week. I'm hoping to op- upload it on Wednesday. That That's my goal. And then we're going to be watching, um, watching it live on stream on Sunday and then kind of giving a little bit of deeper dive as to what happened there and what were our thoughts were. Because there was yeah. a lot of good plays this weekend. <laughs> For those watching on YouTube, the Twitch link is twitch.tv slash player number. So player <laughs> two gaming. It's actually player and then the piece emoji and then gaming. That's the no. All of the links to everything that we have is in the description below, whether it's on Twitch or whether it's on YouTube. So um, you could just click the link. Um, and follow us that way. We don't have our own custom YouTube link yet, but we're working on it. We'll get it soon. We're getting there. We need your help. So um, be looking out for this. Uh, If you didn't get to watch us live, we'll be uploading it tomorrow morning on Monday and be on the lookout. We'll be streaming on Tuesday and Thursday this week, probably around 9 p.m. So why do you keep pushing this back? We've been doing nine the past couple weeks, nine to like 11. Well, when we played Borderlands, it was like 9 to 12, 30. <laughs> that <laughs> game was so, so good. good. That game was so good. All right. We will see you guys later. Thanks for uh, thanks for tuning in. It was fun. Yeah. Go Huntsman. Go Huntsman, man. We'll see you guys later. <laughs>